All right, so let's jam on this, Dominic. You were just saying off air, you were doing a coaching call on Monday, and one of the most common things that kept coming up on the coaching call was 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 mindset, specifically around being consistent with our actions, our behaviors, our habits, or the lack thereof, and or this feeling of almost like in, insecurity that a lot of real estate agents feel when it comes to providing value to prospects, being the type of agent that someone would want to hire. So unpack that a little bit. Give me some more context, and then we're going to jump into this conversation and hopefully help people today really build and strengthen that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And so this does come up, especially with new agents, uh, but also with agents who haven't built a career on on meeting new people and inserting themselves in uncomfortable situations. And and so, yeah, what, what it boils down to, you and I have talked about this a lot, but it boils down to confidence. And, and, and confidence, when you pick it apart, the word confidence is based in, in the Latin word fidere, which means trust, right? And it means to trust. And self-confidence is to trust in one's own abilities. It's a self-assurance in your own abilities. And where does that come from? Well, and we know that it comes from building your own knowledge base and building your skills and combining that with time. That's right. right. That's yeah. exactly right. Well articulated. I mean, that was that was really good. And that reminds me of a couple things, you know, from 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 this book that I think that everybody in the audience should get or read. And those listening on the podcast, I'm holding up a book of Atomic Habits by James Clear. And there are some things in this book, Dominic, that have really shaped my life, truly. And I want to unpack those for the audience that I think will really help this conversation. So the question is that you and I always get on a coaching call is, how do I build confidence? I understand and I agree with you, Dominic, but how do I build confidence? So the first thing is the, the brain needs proof that it is making progress because you can't fake it, right? You cannot fake it. I, I, I don't, it's hard for people to fake it till you make it type of thing. There's context and nuance around that saying that I think some people get out of context. But the, the brain truly, in order to feel confident, because confidence is a feeling, right? You can't measure it on a spreadsheet. You know, it's like, okay, no, it's not. It's a feeling. So in order, in, in, in how to increase confidence is the brain, James talks about in the book, is it needs small wins that you are tracking towards the goal. And so in our business of real estate sales, how might one do that? Well, there's no better way to do that than detaching from the outcome and focusing on the process of sales. So what I mean by that is this, instead of focusing on, you know, oh, I didn't get a listing this month or I don't have an appointment this week, what James recommends and what we recommend to agents that we coach is to focus on the activities that we can control that lead to outcomes. And not only just the activities, but here's the key, 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 key piece. Everyone on this podcast has heard before the importance of tracking your numbers. However, when you look at it from a scientific perspective on habit creation, on confidence creation, this little, this little habit of ticking the little piece of paper, tracking one contact after the next, let's just say your contact goal is 25 contacts a day. And you're, you make the focus around ticking off 25 contacts a day. That's the only thing that we want somebody to focus on. What ends up happening is the game the person creates for themselves without even knowing it is they become addicted to the behavior and that behavior by default generates results, generates outcomes. 
Because the person who is so focused on the outcome and not the behavior comes into their office, makes one phone call, doesn't get an appointment, gets frustrated, and then stops making the calls. And so therefore, as a result, never get great results versus the person who focuses on the activity or the behavior. So much so, there's a story in the book. Okay, I'll give you the highlight. I'll give you the, the cliff note version of it. This is what I'm talking about. So there was a salesperson in, in, in the story. This is a real study. I, I think I told you about this on a phone call the other day. And he was new to the industry. And all his leader had him do was move 100 paper clips from one side to the desk to the other. That's all he wanted him to focus on. Don't focus on what you're saying. Don't focus on the scripts. Don't focus on how you sound. Don't focus on how you're being judged, whether you're getting appointments, whether you're generating leads, whether you're bringing in revenue. Don't worry about that, Bob. It's all good. All I want you to do is move this little pile of paper clips from here to here. Now, human brain can, can conceptualize that much easier than a fully complex business of like all the things you've got to do in real estate, right? So this guy does that for a year. And when he looked up, he was the number one salesperson at the company. But all he was focused on every day was the paperclip moving and everything else took care of itself. So for me, that's where this conversation starts. Your thoughts? Uh yeah, look, I I agree 100%. And you you've coached us to track our numbers for well forever since the beginning. Right? Since the very beginning because if you I mean, we used to say it, well, you used to say it to us, if you don't know where you are, it's impossible to get to where you want to be. How can you yeah. know which how can you know if you're going in the right direction if you don't even know where you are? And and it's tracking numbers gets you gets you to know where you are. That's exactly right. And to add to that, tracking your numbers is, so I talked about the little wins, right? I talked about that the brain, th this is not for debate. It's not for up for debate. This is what the brain needs to build confidence is it needs proof. And the proof that we give our brain is the tracking of numbers. So I gave, I gave the, the, the little, let me, let me even, go deeper on this. So we, tr we give all of our coaching clients a paper tracker, right? That outlines what they have to do every day, every week, the action plan. So they're ticking the boxes. So they get to play that game every day that they hit their contact goal. We want them to mark off on a calendar. We want them to physically do this. And they, maybe we got to do, I'll do a better job of explaining to people why we do this, but they're going to get it right now in this video. We want the big red marker and I want them to X out every day on a big old school calendar every day that they hit those contact goals. And I want them to focus on checking the box, Xing it off, checking the boxes, Xing it off. What ends up happening is there's a, when they start to create this link and they start to compound these huge red X's on these calendars, it starts to become too painful to break that consistency than it is to do the activity. That's that's key insight number one. I'm laughing. Can let me interrupt you for a second? Please, please. I'm, I'm chuckling because I just came off of one of our famous 30 day challenges where we're prospecting every single day, Monday yep. through Monday for 30 days in a row. And I did that in January, I do at least once a year. And it, it's hard to take a weekend off after that because the brain's trained to get up, all right, pull up the leads for the day, who we're gonna follow up with today. So yeah, you, you, you're right. When you're checking off those, when you're checking off that calendar for 30 days in a row and you're making your 25, 30 contacts, and then you would come to a day where you have scheduled not to do that, it's hard for the brain to break that pattern once it's ingrained. That's exactly right. So that's yeah. step number one. That's what, that's what I would advise people on a tactical uh, standpoint is when, when I say detach from the outcome, it means a lot of different things, but under the context of mindset and confidence, that's what it means to me. It means to remove the, your focus from getting listings, getting appointments, 
getting showings, because that's what everybody in our business focuses on, you know, the end result, the income, the commission. So focus on the actions, focus on the behaviors. We talked about how to do that. Now, the next thing is, because yeah, we talked about how painful it is to break the chain. When you put those numbers into some type of tracking mechanism, like the one we give our agents that calculates all their conversion ratios, that's the proof. That's the proof that you are making progress. You cannot debate your brain. The emotional brain can't debate the logic brain because when you're having a day where you're just like not feeling like you're, you're making progress, you could pull up the tracker and the tracker objectively with no emotion says completely, says otherwise. It says, no, Dominic, it, remove how you're feeling, buddy. Look what you've done over the past nine months. You've actually talked to 4,875 people. You've generated this many leads. You've set that many appointments. You've gone on this many appointments. You've taken this many listings. The tracker can't take away the proof and the evidence the brain needs to believe that you are making progress. It's undebatable when it's tracked, but when it's not tracked, this is when agents fall victim to emotion. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so important to do that at the end of every day so that when you go to bed that night, you have that feeling of accomplishment because we all we all know, and I talked about this a little bit in this coaching call, um, you know, King Sisyphus and rolling the boulder up the hill for all of eternity. And just when you get to the top, it rolls back down. It, un unfulfilled work is the worst punishment that a human being can be subjected to. So if at the end of the day, you can enter your numbers in your tracker and see, hey, I did accomplish something. My work was for something. And you can see it. I mean, how much better are you going to sleep that night? And how much more motivated will you be to get up the next morning and do it again? That's exactly right. There, There is. And so we'll move on to the next step. But when building confidence, what you just touched on, which is so critical, in order to sustain long-term confidence and you're trying to compound on that feeling, we talked about the brain needs proof. Well, what the brain also needs, and this is why you can't fake it, is it's it's basing its level of confidence, the feeling in which you have, whether you're being confident or not confident, based on your ability to follow through on the commitments you've made. That is so key. So when you wake up with intentionality and say, okay, I am going to have 25 conversations a day. The more you do that, the more you start to prove to yourself that you can be trusted, that you should be confident because you're able and you're proving to your subconscious mind that you do follow through on your commitments. It's when the agent has these aspirations of these huge goals, Dominic, but they never their behavior says the exact opposite, which causes people to not be confident because they know they're full of it. They're just all BS. The subconscious mind says, dude, you're all talk. You're not following through on anything. And that's what causes people to feel not confident because they're like day after day, I say, I'm going to wake up and I always hit the snooze button. Today's going to be the day I go for my run. I never do. Today's going to be the day I prospect. I never do. Today's going to be the day where I start my YouTube channel. I never do. And when somebody does that compete, you know, uh, repeatedly over time, of course, the result is you feeling not confident. But the exact opposite is also true. When you compound these wins based on actions and behaviors, your brain can't help but to feel like King Kong, you start to build this confidence up. You agree with that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I I do agree, and it, like like there's always something I want to say while while you're talking, right? Because uh, all of these things are so true. They're, they're so true that yeah, you, you have to do these actions. You have to be able to go through these actions and only be attached to doing the actions, and just have faith that the actions are going to turn into. You know what, what the outcome that obviously everybody does is for a reason, right? They want to ultimately list a house, sell a house, and get paid. But being attached to doing the work, knowing that if you do the work, that outcome is inevitable. 
Yeah, I mean, that's probably it's that's where the saying came from, actions before outcomes. You know, the best analogy that everybody can relate to is getting in shape, right? It it would be like this. And and you know, it's all in this book. I mean, this book literally is is a I know when people say it's a game changer is very um what's the word? Help a brother out. When uh it's very cliché. Yeah. But yeah. it is true that this book's changed my life. And so the way he articulates things. And so let's look at getting in shape. What you're talking about, what you just said is like somebody who wants to get in shape, who's not in shape, going to the gym once, taking off their shirt and looking for abs. Because they're so focused on abs. And so we know those people, the the reality of them ever being in top physical shape is very low because they're so attached to the outcome. The way I look, where the people that are focused on the activity of doing the exercise or the workouts, and that becomes their obsession that they don't measure their success on outcomes. They measure their success on the behavior. It's those people that actually build habits long-term and have great long-term sustained results because what they obsess over is the doing of the work. And it's the same thing in real estate sales. It's the agents that focus on, hey, my success or failure is based on a behavior and an action that I can control. And the more I control that, the better the outcomes, the higher outcomes I get, not the other way around. And so it's so funny you say that. Yeah, definitely. And before I before I interject, did you did you have another point that you you wanted to get into? Otherwise, I was going to ask you a uh, I was going to ask you a tactical question. But before I go there, did you have another point you wanted to make? Probably a ton. So ask away. <laughs> okay. So something that comes up and and uh, pull pull me back on track if we're not heading down the right path here. But something that comes up is. We get agents, especially agents that are new to outbound prospecting, which is what we're focused on in this program. Um, they say, okay, well, I can do that. I know the scripts. I I'm committed to making the calls, but I, I feel like an imposter. I'm mm. scared. Right? I don't know what what value I bring to the marketplace. Like, What, what do I do if somebody asks me about you know, a, a home in their neighborhood and I don't know anything about it? What would yeah. you coach? How would you coach to that? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, you're right. When we get it all the time. I mean, I, I think that first accepting the fact that everyone starts somewhere, that the thought of people think they can out prepare reality, meaning that they somehow feel that they can skip the suck and go right to being good. And you can't get to being good without sucking first, myself included. Right. And so what I would say to somebody or how I would coach an agent is to, and we say it all the time, like embrace the suck. It's a great time because you'll go back and you'll be able to leverage that time a, a lot in your life. Certainly in your career, you'll be able to pull from that. We call it deception. And so let's just call it what it is. People go through these four stages when they start anything new. And this is what you're alluding to, I think. So, so phase one is this unconscious incompetence. They don't know what they don't know. It's just a feeling of excitement. And so I'm starting this new thing. I just got my real estate license, guys. They're telling everybody, I just joined this program with Brandon and Dominic at Reverse Selling. I'm fired up. I'm excited because all I can see right now and all I'm focused on is exactly what we just said is across the river. All I'm seeing is the results. I'm seeing people sell 100 homes. I'm seeing people make $500,000 a year. That's what I see. I'm very excited. That's unconscious incompetence. You don't know what you don't know. Then, then what happens is you get into phase two, which is conscious incompetence. It's when you sit your rear end in a seat and you start making phone calls for the first time and you're like, wow, I suck. Wow, this is way harder than I thought. Wow, I watch Dominic prospect every day live in our Facebook group. Man, does he make it look easy. Because I'll tell you what, I'm sweating through my fourth shirt. I can barely make a phone call. And now you know that you're not good. That is the point of deception. That is when 80, 90% of the people quit, fail, refuse to push through. 
And that is the very moment people have to push through. They have to embrace the fact that, listen, I know that I'm not good at this. I accept not being good. And the only way to get good at anything is to push through this phase of unconscious incompetence. We call it deception because the mind's saying, damn, did I make the right move, Dominic? Should I be in sales? Should I even be a real estate agent? You know, they're questioning everything and it's all emotion and it's all false emotion, right? It's all false emotion appearing real, right? Fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear of something that may or may not ever happen. So in that moment of time, what are we doing? We're focusing on the activities. We're not focusing on the person hanging up on us. We're not focusing on the person saying, oh, you're new and I want to deal with you. All we're focused on is a number of activities and we're building a behavior. And through those activities, we always say it, the learning is in the doing. If you want to get good at anything, you have to do more of it, period, end of story. So those that push through phase two, they finally get into phase three, where we call it being conscious, competent, right? Where you start to get results. You start to build a pipeline. You're starting to set appointments. You're starting to go on appointments. Maybe your ratios aren't great yet. Your skills aren't great, but you're pushing through the pain through pure effort and activities and behaviors and habits. And you're refusing to give up because you've got a strong mindset. So you're getting good results. And so now you're starting to prove to yourself, okay, I can do this. Not very good at it, but I'm doing this. It's like little Johnny who's riding the bike. You know, he, he's not great, but he's not falling on his face anymore. And then the longer somebody can stay in phase three, naturally what happens is they start to get into phase four, which is unconscious competence. It's like most adults driving a car. You see them, they're in the car uh, driving, they're drinking a cup of coffee, putting eyeshadow on and on a phone call the whole, uh, the exact same time. They're so good at driving a car. They don't even have to think about it. And that's where people have to look forward to. So I know that was a long-winded answer, but that's the process people need to go through. And they have to accept the fact of being at each stage and being conscious of like, this is where I'm at and it's okay. Yep. Yep. No. Uh, yeah. It, I love it. And if you were, if you were sitting one-on-one -on -one or coaching a group of agents, brand new agents, new to the business who are scared that they just don't feel like they are confident enough to call somebody in their market and have a conversation or much less, oh my gosh, the dog that caught the bus. Now I have an appointment. What ha I'm going to go meet this person. And I have no idea what I'm talking about. What, yeah. what are some tactical boots on the ground, actual actions that an agent can take when they're not on the phone that they can be doing to go out and learn, you know, become the expert in their marketplace, which of course will beget confidence over time. Two things. And thanks for the alley-oop there, my friend. Set this up nicely for me. Uh, one is to, this is when we get into, you know, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Try to say that five times fast. It's like one of my favorite sayings in the Mulrennan household. So what does that mean? That means that just like a doctor spends lots of time, you know, practicing her craft before she ever opens up somebody's skull to do their, we're, we're talking about doing the same thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what we're talking about is knowing the presentation, yeah. really understanding and the, the why behind the what on why are we going through this presentation that Dominic and Brandon call the days on market presentation? What is it that I'm trying to communicate to the seller to get that seller to see? So number one would be to really spend a lot of time really, really knowing that presentation, really practicing that presentation. So much so that you get the presentation, you grab an agent locally in your office, you get it on camera or someone virtually that you're role playing with, and you're recording that listing presentation in the beginning every day. And I would focus on one part of the presentation at a time until you've got the entire thing dialed in. And at that, I mean, that point you can feel confident. We're talking about confidence here. 
to go on an appointment to ha- handle that conversation with a real seller. That'd be number one. Number yep. two, you have to preview property. Plain and simple, you have to preview property. If there's no better way to build confidence as a new real estate agent, Dominic, as you know, than to go out there and to review the actual product in which you sell. And if you don't know, then you, of course you're not going to be confident. But every agent has the opportunity to schedule an agent preview on every, any property that's listed in their market. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. You can go right in the MLS, schedule an agent preview. So if you're not on an appointment and you've hit your contact goal, the next best thing you should be doing is you should be previewing as many real properties as you can to know the market. There's no better way to know the market than to put your hands on it. Love. I, 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 that's my favorite, favorite thing to do. And any new agent, I promise you, this will be, you, you will feel like the biggest weight in the world has been lifted off your shoulders. When you're in a listing appointment with a for sale by owner or an expired or anybody, and you're showing the comps, and you can confidently say to a homeowner, I've been in that property. I know it. I know what it smells like. I know what it feels like. I know the pictures look better than it actually did. Man, when you can say that to a seller, you can look them right in the eyes and you know it because you've been there. Like that's a game changer. It's Absolutely. Game changer. People buy confidence. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so, you, you got to preview property because you have to understand to, to understand to be great at pricing property and to, again, be a confident listing agent. It's a decision. Just know the inventory better. And one more tactical thing. I know you said two. I'll give you a bonus one. How about that? Is that okay? Yeah, please. Yeah. A bonus tip is to not only preview property, not only to work on your presentation, Well, I'll give you two bonus tips. We're studying the stats from the MLS every single month that come out every single month. We know the stats by memory. The other tip that I often uh, see agents mess up on is they should have themselves on an MLS alert for every new listing pending and sold in their market. Like there should never be a world where One of their friends says, Dominic, did you see that new property go up? And you have no idea what they're talking about. Or a client says, hey, you know, that thing just went under contract. What do you think? And you're like, oh, shit. What what are you talking about? You should be first to know. Go into the MLS. There's a little button that says ASAP, right? And so you should be getting multiple emails a day in real time from your MLS anytime there's movement in the market. This is what we're talking about. When, we, when it comes to becoming an expert and really knowing the market. So reviewing the stats, knowing your presentation, really practicing it. Like you can send it out on camera to everybody and everyone would give you a standing ovation. That's what we're talking about. Like, holy crap, that person is really good. You could do that as a brand new agent, by the way. So knowing your stats, dialing in the presentation, previewing property, and setting yourself up on an MLS alert. Yeah, and that brings that that brings you full circle. So if you're doing all of those activities, right, it's it's the perfect circle. If you are an expert in your market, you're confident in your presentation, and you're making your outbound prospecting calls, it it's it's the perfect circle. You will you will develop what you feel like is missing, which is self assurance in your own abilities. And you'll That's want right. to, your brain will want to go and present to people if you know you have something of value to bring them. Yep. And that value word, we just told you how to how to have it. Without yeah. doing those four things, you don't have any value to bring. So of course you're not confident going into an appointment. So let me talk about one more tactical thing. I want to talk about this concept of be to have versus have to be. And so this is really critical. What what it has to do with, the idea is this, is that when you are in the moment of deciding, okay, am I going to do the work that I know I should be doing or am I not? We need to start looking at it and evaluating it, not from our current self, but from our future self. So the question is, how will my future self respond to this behavior 
if I continue to behave this way. So in other words, if I decide to stay up late, go out, party, drink alcohol, do whatever you do, sleep in, eat donuts, and not take care of myself, instead of thinking about that in terms of your current self, because your current self wants instant gratification. So what we want to do is we want to create a frame to, to ask ourselves, what would my future self, how would my future self respond to this behavior? So we fast forward. All right, so now I'm X age and I keep doing this. How's that person going to respond to this? They probably would respond with a lifetime of regret. That person yeah. would probably say, dude, if you could only go back 20 years, you'd probably do it all different. And that's how you have the power to go from victim to becoming the type of person you want today without having to wait. Same thing with real estate. If I don't prospect today, it might feel like I got myself out of some pain, but let's fast forward three or four or five years from now. How is that person going to feel? What advice would that person give my current self? And the opposite. What would happen five years from now if I prospect and have 20 conversations a day or 30 conversations a day? It's 7,200 conversations a year, right? Times that by whatever, five, 35,000 conversations over the next five years. And I suck. Pretend like you suck and you your ratios are really bad. You know, 5% contact to lead, you know, 1% lead to appointment, so on and so forth. Where would you be in five years? Play it out. And what that will do is it will help you make better decisions today. Did I articulate that clearly? Like, did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I promise you there's not one person who's who's uh, 50 years old who wouldn't want to go back and grab 20-year-old self and... There you go. That's exactly <laughs> right, Dominic. Attention. Yeah. And, that, yeah. You, you, and, and again, I'll go back to the book one more time. He has a whole chapter on that methodology on saying, well, okay, I know it feels good to sleep my ass in right now, or whatever the thing is, whatever whatever behavior that you're faced with, it's just to remove yourself from the current state, from your current self, and just fast forward. How would future self like this? How would this impact future self? How would future self advise me here? And this is can guide you. This is a really good guiding decision-making framework, Dominic, for people to make awesome decisions right now based on future self's advice. I agree. Whenever I'm talking to a younger person, whether they're uh, an agent in our program or or one of one of my kids or one of my kids' friends, I tell them this, the same thing. If you do this now, future you will thank you kindly. That's right. I promise and you. And every day you get to decide. It's a decision. You know, and so anyway, I hope that we beat this. I mean, there's probably more, but we just went for 30 or so minutes. And I think that hopefully people really got it, you know, like mindset and, and some tactical things. And so appreciate uh, the conversations with you truly. I like how deep we went today. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Much appreciated. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon.